bullpen, the only mafia news station. Hey, uh, lately uh, I've been listening to music and I've been in a lot of meetings. My hearing is going and uh, uh, it's been really great because I have my Raycon wireless earbuds. They're great. You can make it lower, you can make it louder. Um, there's these little tips that go into your ear. You know, hardly feel them. And um, I work out a little bit, and um, no matter how much I work out, they don't fall out. They're really good. So they have these optimized ear tips. They're soft. You can put them way into your ear. They don't fall out. Eight hour playtime, 32 hour battery. So, you know, you, you could spend the day with these and uh, you're not always uh, pressing buttons or plugging things in. They're great. They are, they are really good. They're half the price of other premium brands. 50,000 five star reviews. Now, that's saying something in any product, no matter, I mean, no matter what. Three customized programmable sound profiles. They have noise, isolation, for every, it's for whatever you want. And I love it. My wife is yapping away, I shut it off. I don't, like, all I see is I'm out jumping up and down. I don't hear nothing. So they're great, they're really great. If you got a yappy ass wife <laughs> or a yappy ass husband, this is, you gotta buy these, bro. And awareness mode so you could still hear what's going on around you. Go to buy Raycon.com. Use the code OURTHING15 and you'll get a 15% discount on this item. And that's code OURTHING15 at buyraycon.com. Don't forget, this is a great product. Jump on it. Tell them Sammy sent you. Use that code at buyraycon.com. Hey guys, we're back again. This is the second uh, video on the bullpen. I'm going to stay on the subject of fentanyl and what's happening in our country. I told you I'm going to stay with it, and uh, I'm not going to pull away. There's a lot of things I'm going to discuss about it uh, today, and a lot of you people sent me letters. I got them one after the other. And um, it's really touching my heart how many people and how many people have problems and you're know, sharing your problem with me. And a lot of you people think I don't read these things. I read most of them. I mean, I've gotten so many letters, I can't read them all, but I read most of them. And I have my team reading the ones I didn't read. And then they'll say, you gotta read this one. and so on and so forth. He has been getting a lot of letters, a lot of emails, voicemails. We got, this has got to be like a nine page letter from David Brown. Um, can I share a little Go ahead. bit? Sure, sure. Um, I'll say it again, Sammy. You really inspire me for what you're doing. You came out of the deepest hole in hell and now you are on top of the mountain. What inspires me most is what you had to do to overcome all the roadblocks placed in front of you, to be where you are now. The lies will always travel faster than the truth, but the truth will always find its way out eventually. That is, how, that is what is happening now with you and your story. My purpose is to thank you for your inspiration and help. Within your stories, I have found some great advice. Well, again, thank you for the letter. Um, I'm not at the top of the mountain, I just started. I'm at the bottom of the mountain, and the more people that come on, uh, you'll push me to the top of the mountain, but I need everybody to come with me. We're all gonna go to the top of that mountain together. We're all gonna beat this together. I'm talking to you people, I've got some letters from you, um, and what this, this is not you, that addicted to it, but somebody you know, or your child, or your nephew, or your cousin, or somebody, it's heartbreaking, it's breaking my heart. It really is. I'm really touched by it. It touched my family like I told you, and I was angry and I wanted to come out, and it touched so many people. Um, 
I had a friend of mine who's a very dear friend of mine. He has a limousine service in California. And uh, his name is Art. And uh, he lost his son to OD uh, about eight months, nine months ago, and he's been devastated. And we're close friends, and I stay in touch with him all the time. And he saw my video. He called me. He was talking to me, and I said, uh, "Yeah, I, if you'd want to come and talk about it," he said, "Sammy, right now, I I really want to come and talk. I'm so angry about it, but I'm so." screwed up, he says, I'm going to tell you the truth. I had a gun in my mouth the other day. And I tell him, brother, don't do that, bro. Put that gun away. Come out, talk, fight. You got another son, you got family. What happened to your son is a, is, is a nightmare. I, I get it. I really do get it. But taking your life is going to make things ten times worse for your whole rest of your family. Please, do me a favor. Throw this fucking gun away. Get it away from you. Don't even think like that. Art is a beautiful person who does nothing but favors for people. Whatever he can do, he does for all kinds of people. And I've seen him. It broke his heart. So it's not just my family. It's a friend. It's people from all over the place. Melissa has people who are friends. She's, she, you know, she's the head of my operations. She's my number one. She was telling me a story. It's choking me to fuck up. She's telling me this story, and I see the way tears are running down her eyes. She's choking up. She can't talk, just like I'm starting to get now. And it kills me to watch her. Her pain, I see it so clear. That's why I'm reading these letters and I'm talking about people. I want you to join me fight this. For so many other people, I know it's hard. I know you'd rather sit down and, 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 and um, sulk about it. Be angry. I mean, I have some people telling me, who are you to talk or who am I to do this and all this bullshit. Who am I to talk? I have no gain here. More than likely in this war, I'll get shut down. I have everything to lose and nothing to gain. The only thing I have to gain is I could look in a fucking mirror. I know who I am. Who the fuck are you to try to shut me down? Don't you have kids? Don't you have something to say to these politicians? Back me. You want to call me whatever we want to call me later on? Do it for whatever your reasons are. But not with this. This has to do with everybody around us. And if you're knocking this, or knocking her for reading and spending time, Melissa flew down here to do this. And if you're knocking people like us for doing this, I don't know what's wrong with you, bro. I really don't. Maybe you're bitter, maybe you're angry. I have no idea. But this isn't the time. Don't let these people knock us off balance. That's what they want. They want us to talk and be angry. And it doesn't matter, black, white, Hispanic, women, men, old, young, middle-aged. If the person is taking drugs, let's help them. The only way for us to help them is to stop it from coming in. It's not made in Mexico. Mm -hmm. It's not these Mexican people. It's cartels that are bringing it through the border but it's coming from China and India. They're making it. I got another person who gave me a negative. Well, you guys in the mafia use their drugs. No, no. If you want to remember or look at the facts, Carlo Gambino, Paul Castellano, they laid down a rule. We were doing drugs, the mafia, not me. But the rules came down if you take drugs or sell drugs, you die. And it kind of slowed it down. Now there's always guys who did it. So what's the difference between when the mafia was dealing heroin and the opiates back then? What's the difference now? You're right, especially when I was the underboss. There was drugs coming in from 
Spain, from France, they called it the, the, the French Connection. It went through Canada, came into the United States. But it wasn't this. What confuses me about this drug is that I understand when you get somebody in their 18, 20s, 30s, and you get them hooked. So that they're hooked and they're going to get money and come back to you as a customer and you're making money. I don't like it, but I get it. When you're, you're not hooking a kid 10, 12, 14 years old, they're not going to be hooked where they go get money and come back and buy off you every week. So what is the motive to give kids fentanyl? It's made literally to kill them. They're not going to get hung up on drugs. They're just going to die. My crew, to answer you, Anna, my crew, we never got busted with drugs. We never dealt drugs. I didn't do drugs for one reason. I didn't like the people I had to deal with. I was in construction business. I was a loan shark. I was a lot of things, made a lot of money, and I just didn't want to touch drugs. I commend you. You have been having a lot of sleepless nights. This has just, you've been sick over this. You are obsessed. You will not stop. I love that you say, I am limitless. You cannot stop me. You cannot shut me up because that is exactly the type of man that we need to lead um, this fight. And it is a fight. I'm just going to keep going with this war. I call it a war. We're not coming out with guns and things like that. But we got to come out with our voice. That's our power. That's what all we have is our voice. Power of the people to vote, to vote these people out. My son was telling me that people that were killed, it, 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 it overcomes what we lost in wars. I was young enough, I was in the army during the Vietnam War, and I believe we fought that war for almost 20 years. And we lost 58,000 people, 58,000, in a war. Bombs, things going off. We lost 100 or 110,000, whatever the number is. That's double the amount of people we lost in Vietnam. What do we need to be compassionate about our own people in this country? I'm not saying we, we want to disregard people. There's ways to come in this country. They can close the border. They can come through the right way. I'm not talking about the people who are suffering and need help. There's ways to help them. But the open border is, it's, you talk to all these government agencies, this stuff is coming through untouched. And our government is putting them on buses and planes and shipping them all over the country. And that's how the fentanyl is going all over the country. And they're allowing that. Better yet, by keeping our mouths shut, we're allowing it. I think it takes a million times more courage and bravery to have gotten through the shame and the guilt of a past mistakes to now come out in a purely altruistic state to, to fight this, to fight the drugs. If anybody's gonna talk about it, it should be you. It is you, thank God. I don't wanna hear it from somebody who has no idea what they're talking about. I'm a gangster. I can see through this stuff. It's loud and clear, and it's not just me. I guarantee you every gangster, whether he's black, Italian, white, Hispanic, they see this, they know. I'll guarantee it. They know this is a scam. They don't want, it was three million now, I hear, that came over this border in the past two years with Biden, being compassionate. Another couple of years, it'll be seven or eight million. It's not about money that they're getting money under the table, no. No, they're all going to get a card.
citizenship card. And they're all going to vote. Don't you think that's what it's about? It's not ex nobody's handing nobody money under the table like we would do with the mafia. This is about votes. And if that's what it's about, these politicians that we put in place can care less about us. Who's going to die? She's going to die. I'm going to die. My kids, my grandchildren, they don't care. That is unlike the mafia. Totally unlike the mafia. We did bad things. I admit I did bad things. Nothing like this. We're Boy Scouts compared to them. Boy Scouts. And a mafia guy, oh, he'll do 100 years. Some black guy belongs to a gang, he'll do 100 years. We're not doing what you're doing. And the rest of the country's sitting back and saying, well, that's the way it is, bro. I have, another, I have a few passions. This border, homeless. You're so compassionate. We have a million homeless people in the streets, and I think that's a, a very small number. I don't have a statistic on it, but I would imagine every place I go, I see them. So you're so compassionate, how come we can't do something for them? There's so many things we can do. They, here's their fights. Let's get rid of cops. The hell with firemen. We get, we're getting rid of the wrong groups. We're doing the wrong thing. Now, people say, oh, these guys are so stupid. I disagree. Politicians are not stupid. What they're doing is with their knowledge. They understand it. They're doing illegal shit. I'm not saying we got to throw them in jail, I, but throw them out of office. Tell them this is what you're going to do. I voted for you to do this. No matter what party it is, I don't care what party. I don't want to sound like I'm picking a party or picking anything. I'm picking on people who will not do their job we voted them in. If it was somebody coming from overseas, we'd fight our brains out. This is an internal thing. This is people in our own country are selling us out. I think there's a word for it. I know I cooperated with the government. They called me a rat. I don't like the term. Um, these people are fucking traitors. And they're serial killers. Think about these numbers. I remember Governor Cuomo saying, well, it was Trump's fault. He told me to do this. Now, he didn't tell you to do it, number one. And I'm not tooting Trump's horn. You did it for your reasons. I don't care if Trump told me when he was the president, Sammy, go do this. Put, put all those people with the coronavirus in with these old people. I would tell Trump, yeah, fuck you. I'm not doing that. You go do it. I'm not doing it. I don't care what the consequences would have been because I could have never lived with myself. The number is 15,000 people died because of what Governor Cuomo did. Now, is he in jail? No. No, 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 no. What happened to him? He wrote a book and made $5 million. Got a slap on the wrist and went home. Yeah, that's a punishment, I guess. Is that a punishment? He's not the governor no more. All right. Got five million. You need to go one day in jail. I did 20 years for fucking it and ecstasy. Lifetime supervised release and a $100,000 bail. I don't know if I'm a hypocrite. I don't think I am. I know I'm fighting for something I believe in something that touches my heart. In my old age, every once in a while, some of these things hit me, it just breaks my fucking heart. And I, 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 I'm not embarrassed to say it. Tears could start coming to, out, I choke up, I can't even fucking talk. So it's not hypocritical, that's why I'm doing this. And I got a weird habit. 
No matter where I go, I see people with kids smiling, people working hard. I look at them in a way like, this is who we're killing. And this is going to be a crusade for me. I'm not stopping. And all you people who are listening to me, if you want to join me, send me letters, send me emails. If I got to hire more people, if I got to go broke doing this, then so be it. If you've ever lost anybody to this ugly warfare that's going on, um, if you yourself have been struggling with it, if you've overcome it, or maybe you're still on that journey, please send us a video, two to three minutes max, and tell us about that. Speak out, use your voice, and share that with Sammy. He would absol absolutely love that. And she's 100% right. I mean, the more you guys speak out, the more I, stronger I become, and the more I will speak out and I'll fight every minute of every day. But we need to show the rest of the world, help me, showing the rest of the world out here, in the United States especially, what's going on. I'll read the letters, I'll show them, a, a short video, I mean, it's gonna probably be a lot, so a short two, three minute video, and if I can, I will show it on one of the interviews that I do, or I'll show it in, in a small clip and I'll put it out. Fight back for that person who died. Come out and talk about it. Because if we can't do this together, I, we're in trouble. We're in super trouble. A house divided cannot stand. Mm -hmm. United we stand, divided we fall. Mm -hmm. They got us arguing with each other, fighting with each other, and and we got to get away from that. Sammy, I think we're getting the wave. I think we got to wrap it up soon. I think. Okay. <laughs> and to all my people out there, adios, motherfuckers. And one more thing. To you other real motherfuckers, someday I'm going to see all of you people.